Question number seven, Phil Twyford. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the Minister of Local Government. How much has been spent on the rules reduction task force in total? The Honourable Mr. Paula Speaker, Bennett. the cost of the task force, most up-to-date numbers I've got, is at the 31st of August 2015, $727,241 has been spent. Thank you. Supplementary, Supplementary Mr. question, Phil Twyford. Why does she think it's a good idea to let builders certify their own work when there is so much poor quality building going on in Auckland that the council has set up an investigations unit to crack down on rogue builders, has laid 22 complaints with another 39 pending. The Mr. Speaker, Paula Bennett. Well, I don't necessarily. What it says in the report quite clearly is that there's quite a few issues to work through, particularly with the licensed building, building practitioner scheme. So it is about, no, it says we've got a mixed picture of the industry. Uh, no? Oh. Keep going. Out, Not done. Out. Right. So we've got a mixed, pix, mixed picture of the industry. So we've got a whole lot of cowboys that, quite frankly, shouldn't be. But we've also got a whole lot of people that are really quite excellent and probably could. We've got electricians that currently um, do their own work. We've got gas fitters that do. Some builders that are at a certain competency and have been licensed. Um, maybe we need to look at that. Supplementary, Mr. Speaker. Supplementary question, Phil Twyford. Does she agree with Nick Smith, who said it's worth considering allowing builders to just get on with the job without needing a building consent? In light of today's revelation that a Christchurch family used newspaper to plug the gaps in their leaky home after a shoddy EQC rebuild. Either of those two supplementary well, questions, the Honourable Paula Bennett. Mr Speaker, first of all, get us a name and address because I uh, just heard the Minister say that he'd like to look into that. But more importantly, there is most definitely some builders whose work they should not be certifying themselves. There are others that, particularly if we tighten up the Licensed Builder Practitioner Scheme, we make sure we have them at a certain level of excellency. They're actually insured as well for their own work and are under an association that maybe, as the Minister has said, it's worth exploring. And that's what we're saying. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Phil Twyford. Why does she think the country has moved on from the leaky homes disaster, given that the National Party's last experiment with deregulating the building industry even now continues to curse homeowners with untold cost and misery? Or does she just think they've forgotten? Again, well, Mr. Speaker, of those two supplementary as questions, um, someone who actually Paul owned a leaky home, I have extreme sympathy for others that were in that situation and still do. Under no circumstances will we be going back to that, and do we want to see that same kind of building happening? We also, though, need to recognise the additional costs that are involved and take a common sense approach <laughs> that if they're licensed and insured, we should at least be exploring it and making sure that we can and that there are different products now. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Phil Twyford. When she went on television in May, raising examples of red tape like the banning of lolly scrambles or the requirement to wear a harness when using a stepladder, did she know then that they were myths? Or did she need to spend $700,000 of taxpayers' money on her task force to tell her that they were myths? And doesn't this show that this is yet order, another order, political order, sign? Order, order. Order the questions being asked. And Mr. The Speaker, Honourable more than 2,000 submissions and us actually listening to people who are experiencing things. What I will say is that as much as I, um, as much as I love the tradies, and I even married one, they're the greatest ones for having one experience and then sitting in the lunchroom and saying that that is gospel and the rules that are out there. And often they're not true. We can actually do more for costs, we can do more for efficiencies if we do break down some of those myths. As as well, and that's a big part of it. Order. Order. Question number eight, Simon O'Connor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. 